I mean, we're we're all rather young, and we all wanted to experiment, you know, and try things out. Um, I mean, she and I certainly did it more with thinking about consequences and whatnot. Um, same with Osara too. She totally kept me in check. Um, she kept me from bombing a couple of tests because I would want to go out, and she'd be like, "You need to stay home and go to bed." She was like, "I'm going to go home and go to bed," and I'd be like, "Don't you want to go have fun in our in our young prime years now?" And and she's like, "Oh, but you got school," and I'm like, "Oh man." I myself and I think a lot of other people in the group are very like, "Oh, well, that sounds great," but never think of the bad things. And she would, and, and, or, or think of just the other sides. And I think she would just present that, and I mean, not all the time. And it wasn't like she was a prude or anything. I mean, she was still a, a risky, and she still was fun. It was just sometimes. You know, I would get a little too risky, and she would be like, "Well, this is what you know, this is what might happen." Not that I wouldn't still do it. She would just offer that opinion, and if I did decide to do it, she'd be supportive. I tended to listen more to my friends' advice than my parents, just because, you know, my parents didn't know. She always had a Boone's Farm. She always drank Strawberry Hill Boone's Farm, and then like. Like, especially when Molly and I would drink, we would just, I mean, we were like 16. You know, like, when you drink, you're going to drink, you know. And she would always just be like, take the bottle away and be like, you know, you need to lay down, you need to, yeah. In that sense, she was very motherly. And she never got drunk, ever. I've never seen her drunk. Like, I've seen everybody drunk, you know. Like, we, you know, get drunk. She always was like that. Like, if she didn't want to do something, she didn't do it which is, I think a lot of teenagers kind of are bad about that, you know? They'll do it even though they don't really want to. But she always was too, too smart for that or too stubborn or whatever. Brutally honest, you know, like, if, you know, like, hey, your hair looks stupid, <laughs> you know, none of that, oh yeah, it looks nice, it was, yeah, no, that looks bad. And that's how Sally was, you know? She said whatever she felt and always teased her about her being so brutally honest and, you know. It's weird in our circle because, I mean, we all look up to each other in different ways. But with her, she was, like, the only person who I really trusted to be honest with me. Because, I mean, some people, they just don't want to, like, hurt your feelings or they don't want to, you know like bring you down and it wasn't like she wanted to do that either but she just knew that that you needed to hear certain things and she was more just like this is what this is what it is you know deal with it she wasn't like oh it's okay she was more like well you know you did do this and so now you have to deal with it she was almost like a conscious like to a lot of us i mean she was definitely the most responsible she definitely was the most grounded like cuz I, I tend to just float off into space, and she could definitely just pull me back and say, you're going too far, you know? Not that there weren't, like, times when she wouldn't be, like, you know, you know, like, pushing me on, and, like, she'd have a, she, it's like good angel, bad angel, but she was, for the most part, she was definitely, like, the good angel, and she was very, yeah, she was just very, very protective in a very, um, in a very motherly way. I totally remember her laugh. Like, that's one of the things I remember about her. She. She laughed at anything. She laughed at things that were not funny at all. She was so much fun to be around. And at the same time, if you, it wasn't even like if you got out of hand or if you got out of line, because she wouldn't like force you to do anything. She would just be like, look at yourself, you know? Like she'd make you look at yourself. Like she drove me to Cleveland because I had to be in Cleveland. Like she just did that for me, and, you know, without any real reason for her to do it. And like, like really, that kind, that whole unconditional thing, like I really felt like there was very little I could do that would make her mad, and and that was part of like that was part of her role in the group, I think, is that, and I think a lot of us took that for granted that she would just always be there for us. I don't know. I think I think of her as like an old soul, and so she just had this kind of grown upness about her, always. She just always had more of a head on her shoulders than me.